you like the video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Alright, welcome back. Where we take a look inside our box here. Now, I haven't looked at these at all since we did it, so I don't know if they're dried out, if they're melted, or just gone like Rachel. We'll never know. But as you can see, they are still there. And they look just fine. Now this one was one I did on camera to show you guys applications. And this is the silver. All looks fine. Uh, let's see here. It's not just scraping off. This is interesting now because it's, as I'm rubbing it, it's starting to get a little shine to it. But this is, this is silver. Let's see. Hmm? Did that just flake off? Got a little bit of flaking there, so definitely don't catch it. Let's see. <coughs> Okay, it doesn't have any tackiness to it. But I think, as far as what we're going for, it would do just fine. This one's carbon. And that one looks a-okay. Yeah. Just like any acrylic, this one's nickel, and here's our water base. This was silver coated copper. These do do sort of a firmness on there. But for the purposes of just clicking, I think it'll do just fine. As with the tape, it was just adhesive, but all it's doing is pushing down. So I don't think it's just going to fly off. But all four looks, looks to adhered quite nicely. So I'm going to document where these will line up. All right, and then as you can see, I have everything mapped out. You can somewhat verify. Now, another use this paint has is if something happened and I damaged any of the traces on this, you can use it to fix traces. And depending on how much voltage you plan to send through it, there are 
charts on their website that let you know what each each one can handle and if you need to use one or two layers. Now for what we're doing, we're not really sending all that much power, so one layer will do us just fine. And also did say I would talk about an alternative to use on any of the membranes to keep it keep the rubber healthy. And Toyota actually recommends cleaning rubber with lithium. Like, I guess, just the spray for cleaning. And then using something like dielectric grease and rubbing that in after. Now, I don't know if there's weird chemical reaction that goes on, but everyone that's actually commented after trying it said that the rubber, you know, obviously was cleaner, but it did soften it and expand it a bit, which really helped in cases like weather stripping, which can be a big issue on a car if you've never messed with it, can be a bit of a headache. But that is all we're going to do on this guy. And I do have some of that dielectric grease on the rubber. But only on the membranes. I'm not going to put grease on any of the buttons because they don't really rub against the plastic that much. And that can work its way back up. And you can end up getting the grease everywhere. Another thing, I don't recommend getting the cheapest precision screwdrivers you can find. Definitely spend more than a few dollars. As you can probably see I have some difficulty getting any of these back in, even using the twist back and pop method. I'll have to redo that one for sure, but very, very difficult to get at least a snug out of any of these. Plus all these are crooked, so way to go China. Now I have thought about the whole painting some traces and I bet we could hard mod an Xbox without any soldering and just using that paint. Because if you've ever done a TSOP flash on an original Xbox, all you're doing is bridging a couple connections. Why does this screw not look in at all? I'll fix it later. But I've I've thought about it and I would I would say we could do that on a video soon, but all the original Xboxes I have, they've already had all those bridges done with solder, and I don't really plan to go back and undo all that just to test, test the theory. But if you've, if you've ever done it, you know what I'm talking about. And maybe you're questioning why we're putting the paint on membrane pads. 
especially on a controller that seemed to work fine to begin with. It's mostly just experimenting. Unless you're one of the lucky people who's dealt with the Atari 5200 controller, then you know ex exactly the joys those membranes seem to bring every child in the world. Let's see here. This guy, he might have cross-threaded on us. I have no idea. I uh, hope not. This might have been the one that gave me issues to get out to begin with. Uh, okay. And all looks good. All clicks. Doesn't feel like anything's different in here. L seems a little stiffer, which it's probably normal. All right, then we're going to be trying out some games in the next video, and I'll do a QA. and a So if you have any questions, definitely comment below, and I will answer those in the next video when we test this out. Now, if you want to find the product I used, definitely hit up their website, which I'll link below. I actually discovered them through Amazon. And I think that's just one of the distributors they actually list officially. But thanks to them, we get to try this out. Now, personal opinion on this after fiddling with it and feeling it. Now acrylic dries kind of hard. Uh, whatever spilled on this I think was latex, so I don't know if they actually do a latex version which would give us more of a rubber coating, but I kind of doubt it. But maybe I'm wrong, someone will correct me on that. But for now, I know which button has which. So if any of these have issues, then I'll know what it was coated with and we can take it apart, see how it puts, see what issues we can find, whether, you know, it was the grease in there that somehow ran or if one of these just peel off. So definitely check out the next video. I'll do the Q and A have some footage of me trying out games. And until next time, I think that'll be it. And a quick reminder of what we're actually using here. Our carbon by MG Chemicals 838AR. This is actually 12 mil, but that is the part number. And this is the little jar it comes in. They do have pens as well if you don't want to buy paint brushes. The nickel is 841AR. And then our water based, which was the silver coated copper, and it is. 843 WB, which I assume is water base. And then 842 AR is silver. And this is, this is going to be the best, but it's 
also the most expensive. And of course, all this came from MG Chemicals. Really nice guys, hooked me up with some samples so we could do some videos on it. I'll line those up. There's, as you can see, no difference in size. And you do get 12 milliliters in any of these. They do have bigger, but of course bigger is going to cost more. And they do have pins as well. So if you don't want to deal with brushing it, you can go that route. But that is truly it, you guys. I just wanted to give you guys a reminder of what we're actually using and who it came from.